Okay, hello everyone. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. My name is Eric Zinger. I'm a senior associate at Lightspeed here in Client Services Desk. Today I'll be running through a demonstration of our new web trader platform and going over some of the key features and functionality that the platform is willing to offer. A couple of things before we get started. Please keep in mind that this presentation is for informational purposes only. Nothing presented today should be construed as investment advice or a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold any specific securities. Since we don't know everyone's investment objectives or risk tolerance, we are not endorsing any specific trading strategies. We encourage you to ask questions as we go through the presentation, and you can do that by typing them in the webinar chat box as we go along. I'll try to answer them as we go, or we will also have a follow-up at the end where we'll do some Q&A. In addition, this presentation will be recorded and uploaded to our online webinar library. You will be able to see this as well as most of our past webinar online at www.lightspeed.com slash webinar. So if at any point during the presentation you missed something or you want to go back and reference it at a future date, you can always go to our website where it will be archived. If you have any specific questions about you, what you are seeing or you're interested in opening an account, please feel free to contact us directly at service. That's S-E-R-V-I-C-E -E at lightspeed.com, or also by visiting our website, www.lightspeed.com. So now that that's out of the way, let's get started. So as many of you know or may have heard, Lightspeed is rolling out our new web trader platform. We're all really excited about some of the features and functionality that this is available for you guys. Uh, we really think that uh, with some of the feedback we've gotten, we really think that you guys are going to like it. Now. Um, once you're switched over to our new web trader platform, you'll no longer have access to the old site, and all trading and activity will be done through the new web trader. One of the advantages of this is that everything can be done through lightspeed.com. So whether you're looking for trading history, uh, doing cash transfers, any kind of account maintenance, you're also going to be accessing the uh, trading platform through lightspeed.com. So it's only one username and password to remember. Everything's all on the same site. And uh, we're really excited that we're able to consolidate everything into one login for you, so you only have one login to remember. All right, so let's get started. So the first thing that's going to happen is once you are switched over to our new Lightspeed Web Trader product, you're going to receive an email with your username and password. When you go through that username and password, you'll log into Lightspeed.com, set your own customized password, go through a couple of initial setup steps, and then you'll get to Lightspeed.com. When you're on lightspeed.com in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see a link that says Launch New Web Trader. That's going to be how you're going to access the platform. It's browser-based, just the way that it was before, and you can access it through your computer, desktop, or a Windows operating system tablet or mobile phone, so for example, a Microsoft Surface. One thing you do need to make sure that you do before you access the web trader is you need to have Microsoft Silverlight installed, and that's a plugin through Microsoft. You can download it. We're going to include instructions on how to download it in your welcome email. But if you also just do go to Microsoft's homepage and do a quick search for Silverlight, you'll be able to download the plugin there. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to log into the web trader here just through our, our back end portal here. Okay, and this is an overview of what the web trader looks like. Now, there's a lot of windows, a lot of different features and functionality, and I'm going to start by going through them one by one. So uh, first, we have our account summary window. What you're going to see here is you're going to see cash buying power, margin buying power, your equity, P&L information. This is really a status of your current account. How much buying power are you using? What's your P&L on the day? You know, really good for, for monitoring intraday P&L. It's something that's live and updated intraday, so it gives you a really good tool to use to monitor you know, what your open P&L is, what your exposure is, things like that. Now moving on to the right, you're going to see your open positions window. You're going to see I have a couple open positions in here just to give you an idea of what it would look like. Uh, we've got the account because one of the new features of the Web Trader platform that will be available eventually is you're going to be able to manage multiple accounts through one interface. Okay, so you're going to see the account that the position is in, the number of shares, the type of security, if it's an option, the option details, where you entered the security on the day, and the current you know, price and bid ask. That's a real live bid ask. 
Uh, obviously, not too much is happening now after hours when we're recording this, but that will update in real time for you. Okay, so if you'll notice, we're just going to go through this with the open positions window because it's the first window that we're looking at. In the upper right-hand corner of that window, you're going to see something that says prop. That stands for properties. If you left-click on properties, you're going to see that's where you can adjust the settings. Okay, so you can adjust the order of your columns. For example, if I was to do this and hit apply and close, you'll see now that the symbol is all the way on the left. So you can adjust the order of your columns, which columns you want to display, and that will help you maximize the space on your window for displaying the information that you're looking to display as well. I'll close that out now. Below our open positions window, we're going to move on to the next. We're going to move over to order history. Now, the order history window contains a lot of good information about your open orders and the orders that you've placed throughout the day. So what I'm going to do real quick, I'm going to quickly move on to the equity order entry window so that way I can show you what it looks like when an order is in the system. Okay, so I'm going to type up a stock. I'm going to run through the equity order entry window now as well just to be, uh, so I can show you this here. So we've got live, live bid ask quotes in the equity order entry system. In the upper left-hand corner where I type in the symbol, if you type in the symbol and hit enter, that's how you'll be able to bring up a new symbol. It'll give you the details of the company, the listing, and a couple of other pieces of level one information. The opening price, the closing price, the volume on the day, uh, the size on the bid, size on the ask, as well as some information about what the stock has done on the day. Uh, looks like, for example, Twitter, TWTR, down $1.29 or 0.04%. If we were to type up SPY, uh, we'd see that that was up $1.15, did 104 million shares on the day. Below that is where you're going to enter your order details. So, for example, if I wanted to place a one share limit order at a price of $187.50, okay, if I hit buy, you're going to see an order confirmation, co confirmation pop up. If you don't want this order confirmation to pop up, you can hit remember my decision and you won't have to go through the order confirmation. Now I'm going to hit yes here. And now you're going to see the order in the open orders window. Okay. You're going to see that it's a limit order to buy SPY, common stock, number of shares one, and what time the order was placed. Just like with any of the other windows here, if you click on properties, you can adjust the columns and the order of the columns that are displayed. So once you get in, you're going to be given a default layout, but I'm sure that you're going to want to go through the available columns, customize it for your specific needs. Okay. Now, if I wanted to close, uh, cancel this order, I could do so right here by hitting cancel. Okay. Now you'll see the order goes away. That order is now displayed in your order history window. Order history is going to include any orders that you've placed throughout the day. You'll see that the order I just placed is displayed under order status is canceled right there, letting you know that the order has been canceled. So this is a nice feature that you can toggle between these two windows here. If you want to keep them as separate windows, what you can also do is you can left click on one of the other windows and drag it away. You'll see now that the order history window has become a separate window. But one of the things we wanted to do is give you the ability to minimize the space used. So you can go ahead and click and drag, move it back into the middle, and if I move it here, you'll see that now there's tabs for the different windows, and you can tab back and forth. A little more efficient use of your screen page there for you. Okay. So back to the equity order entry window, because there's a couple more things I want to go through that with you. Just uh, I wanted to show what an open order would look like. Under order type, you can enter limit orders. LMT stands for limit. MKT stands for market. And then we have some stop orders as well, along with a range order. Okay, so we also have day, GTC, or fill or kill orders. Okay, a day order is going to be active from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay, GTCs, if you place a GTC, a GTC is only eligible to be executed during normal market hours. Okay, so if you want to trade pre-market on our new web trader, that's one of the new features that's available, you can trade in the pre-market with the day order types. Remember that there are no market orders during pre or post market, so you have to enter a limit order with a price. Okay. 
click on properties here, you'll see that you have several options for adjusting your equity order entry window. Uh, you, one of the most popular ones that people like to decide is to adjust the price decimals for orders. You're trading some lower price or pink sheet securities, you want to enter subpenny orders. This will give you the option to you know, put in an order at spot 001, for example. Uh, you, know, you can also adjust the colors and your default quantities. Default quantity, if you type up a new symbol, that's going to be the number of shares that's displayed. So if you know that you always want to have 500 shares, you know, as your default, you can always change that, but you can adjust that here to 500. Okay, and now if I change the number of shares to 300, but change symbols, it's going to change back to 500 if you see there. So that's going to be the default quantity there. Uh, that way you don't have to reset that every time you go forward. Now one of the good features about our new web trader platform is the ability to link different windows together. If you look to the right of the properties window, you're going to see there's a little bit of a green there. Okay. If I click on that, you'll see that I have several options, A, B, C, or D. A is green. So what that means is that if this is now linked to any other window. If you look here in the upper right-hand corner of the open positions window or the chart or this watch list here, you'll see that the green windows are all linked. So for example, if I go to my watch list here real quick and I double click on Apple, you'll see that the chart and the equity order entry window has updated to display Apple. If I go to Windows, I bring up a new equity order entry window, and I'll make this one red, double clicking on my watch list is only going to update the other green windows. It's not going to update anything with a red. If I change this to red now, and I double click on the queues, for example, you'll see the queues populate in this new equity order entry window because it's linked to red windows. This gives you the ability to have multiple equity order entry windows. Leave one symbol up, for example, if you always want to have a certain symbol up or in a specific link certain charts to certain equity order entry windows, that's a good way that you can use to manage your resources and manage the tool that's available. Okay. Moving on, we're going to move on to our options order entry window. Okay. Our options order entry window, very similar to the equity order entry window. You're going to see some level one, some information at the top, bid, ask, current strike, uh, options expiration date, whether it's a put or a call, and you can use this tool to enter your option your option orders. Now, the easiest and best way, that's going to be driven off your option chain window. If you look here, this is the option chain window. This is going to have all of your quotes for options. Okay, This is a great tool because it lets you see multiple strike prices. Um, you can change between expiration dates by clicking on the different tabs here. You can change between calls or puts. You can change between what symbols you want. If you notice, there's a green arrow or green in the upper right-hand corner, meaning this is linked to all green windows. So for example, if I go back to my equity order into a note and type in SPY and hit Enter, you're going to see that the option chain adjusts to SPY as well. Okay. Now let's say I decide that I want to place an order in the 186 and a half strike price called for SPY. What I would do is I would double click on the position there. And if I double click on the position, you'll see that now my options order entry window is populated with the SPY 186 and a half strike price May 9th expiration calls. Okay. So that's how I'm going to bring in options into the option chain. The other way that you could bring in an, uh, a position into an option chain is using the open positions window. If you have an open position and you want to add to that position, or place a stop order in that position, or close that position out, all you would have to do is make sure that your option open positions window is linked. So they're both green here. You'll double click. Now you'll see that the open theory contract that I have is in the options order entry window for me to place a trade. OK, I'm just going to run through a couple more of the windows here. We have our watch list. OK, watch list can hold up to. 20 symbols of different securities. Just like in the other windows, if I go to properties, I can adjust which columns are displayed and the order in which those columns are displayed. So I can have you know, live quotes for many different symbols. I can see what's going on in terms of volume, 
I can see what the low is, the current the last price, change, any of the different features that you wanted to add. You can obviously add or delete symbols. If I click on a symbol and hit the delete key, like I'm doing for Apple right now, you'll see it goes away. So I can remove symbols very easily. Um, I can sort by any of the columns here. If I want to sort by what stocks are doing the most volume, I can just click on the volume tab and that will sort by volume. And if I want to add new symbols, I can just click here where it says watch list and add a new symbol by hitting enter. Okay. So now, for example, you'll see I just added TWTR and it did 68 million shares today. Okay. So we've run through most of the major windows that I have displayed here. I'm going to go through a couple of other windows uh, just so you can see the full features and functionality. If I wanted to bring up a new window, I would go to the upper left-hand corner and go to Windows, and then I could select from my drop-down. Okay, you'll notice we already have an options order entry window. You are limited to one options order entry window, but you can have up to three different equity order entry windows. So I already have equity order entry and equity order entry window two. And if you can see, I'll bring up a third one here as well. So you can have three different equity order entry windows all at the same time. Much better, much faster if you're looking to place quick trades than the previous system. You know, you're going to have multiple symbols queued up, you know, multiple order types queued up, all of which is designed to be a little bit more, you know, efficient in terms of your intraday trading and what you're trying to do intraday. We also have our news window. It's just going to show recent news on in the market. You can scroll through and look for recent news highlights. For, you can also filter by certain securities. Uh, nothing for SPY, but if I think if you filter by certain news headlines, you could bring up different news headlines. Okay, other windows includes our top list. Where's that? Just give me one second to bring that up. There it is. It's just off screen. Give me one second. Okay. Top list, you can use that to sort by a couple of different features. Right now what you'll see is we have NICE most active. If you're looking for um, stocks that are moving in terms of net change or percent change, you know, this is a good way to sort by uh, showing you what's in play, what's going on today in terms of, you know, change up, what's being the most actively traded. If you look for NASDAQ most active, today you'll see that Facebook was the most active NASDAQ listed stock. Uh, not surprising, also we have the Qs, Groupon, Yahoo. So it's a good tool for letting you know with it, in the trading system what's going on, what's in play on the day. Um, so you can use that as well. Okay, so just a couple other pieces of information about the platform before we uh, go ahead and take any questions. One very important piece of information, if you make any changes to your layout, you're going to want to make sure that you go to File and then Save Layout or Settings. If you just go ahead and click Log Off or Close the window down, none of the changes that you made doesn't know that you want to save those settings. So anytime you make a change, you want to go to File, Save Layout and Settings, and it will save what you just did so that next time you pull up all the work that you just spent adjusting your columns and things like that will be saved. Very important to note. We have our search symbol tool. I'm not sure if that's functionality yet on this demo system, but eventually it will be. This is just a demo system, so it won't necessarily display. But uh, looks like if you type in NASDAQ, for example, you'll get a couple of the different NASDAQ ETFs. Or if I type in, let's see. Yeah, we're still working on some of the features and functionality of that because this is a demo platform. But once we get that up and running, you will see that you know, you can use that to look up tickers for different symbols. Okay. So uh, one more thing that I didn't go through is our charts. Our charts are available. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger just so you can see it. Okay. There's a lot of different settings and studies within the charts. You can adjust the period through settings, uh, whether you want, for example, a day or a minute. You know, you can go ahead and adjust what's being displayed. Um, really. You know, good in terms of there's a lot of different stuff in there, and you would have to really play with it in order to figure out what's best for you. So I'm not going to go into too much detail there because 
everyone wants different features and different settings in their charts, but you can use the chart window to uh, get a look at what the stock has been doing throughout the day versus just a bid-ask quote. Um, so that really goes through most of the windows, most of the features in the platform. Um, right now I'm going to open it up to questions. So if you have any questions, you can go ahead and submit them now. Um, a couple of questions that I have received from various users in the past day. I'm just going to run through your commissions. Your commission structure is remaining exactly the same. And that's for equity. That's a flat $2.99 per trade commission, regardless of the number of shares. And for options, or excuse me, for uh, OTC securities or non-listed securities, it's a flat $10 fee per trade. So there's no platform fees. We're giving you live quotes, live level one quotes with no platform fees. Just the way the old web trader had no platform fees, and your commissions are remaining the same. Um, also, in terms of hours, when is the web trader platform available? You can log in at any time. In terms of trading hours, trading hours are available from 8 a.m. Eastern to 8 p.m. Eastern. GTCs are for normal market hours only. So a GTC is only going to execute from 9.30 to 4. So make sure that if you're looking for GTCs, you know, you you enter them for normal market hours. Um, let's see if we have any other questions right now. Okay, it looks like uh, another question is coming in in terms of shorts. What stocks are available to short? Same stocks are available to short as before. Anything that was on easy to borrow list is shortable. You'll be able to short it just by using the short button here. You're going to want to make sure that if you don't have an open position or you're adding to a short, you use the short button, not sell. Okay, if you're covering that short, you're going to want to make sure you use cover, not buy. But all easy to borrow securities remain available for shorting. So none of that's changed at all. Okay, uh, it looks like that is all the questions for now. Uh, I'll hold for a moment to see if there are any additional questions. I'll remind everyone at this time that this webinar has been recorded, so if you'd like to go back and review it, it will be posted to the lightspeed.com website sometime later this week. If you uh, go through this webinar or you have any future questions, definitely give us an email, service at lightspeed.com. You can also call us at one 577 3123. You can hit option one for client services. If you're an international user, you can call us at 1 646 393 4800. So that's 1 888 577 3123 or 1 646 393 4800 and service at lightspeed.com. Okay, I thank you for joining us today. Uh, we really are excited about this new product, and we hope that you share that enthusiasm once you get your hands on it. We are going to be rolling out that in early June for users who are on the old web trader. If you're interested in rolling out earlier, we'd be happy to go ahead and get that set up for you. Just send an email or contact us, service at lightspeed.com. If you're a new account, as soon as you uh, get approved for new paperwork and the account is open, we'd be happy to go ahead and get you your credentials and get you logged in. So thank you for joining us today. My name is Eric. Uh, everyone have a great rest of the day, and we look forward to seeing you on the new platform.